This is the cinematic quality that you can get from your AI videos of your consistent characters if you know how to use the AI tools properly. And I'll show you how I created each of these videos of this samurai character. To get the most cinematic looking shots, you need to use image to video. This is where you create an image of your character first and then animate it into an AI video. It's much better to do it this way. The details will be sharper. The characters will look more consistent. First thing we'll need to do is to actually create the images of our character. We're going to be using this new Omni reference feature inside Me Journey to create the photos of our consistent characters. What this will do is allow us to take an image of a character, upload that, and it'll be able to generate images of that same character inside new images for us. So the first thing we'll need to do is to actually create an image of our character. So inside Mid Journey, let's go to the prompt bar up here. And I'll describe my character like this. I want a full body shot photo of a samurai wearing armor shot on Kodak portrait film. That's just a camera film type that adds a little bit more style and muted colors. If we enter this prompt, Majin will create four photos for us in this image grid to pick from. So it looks like most of them didn't actually create a full body shot of the entire samurai like I asked for. But I think this one will actually do okay. So let's go with this photo of the character. So we'll go ahead and drag him into the prompt bar, making sure that it's inside the Omni reference box, which is OREF for short. So once we've got our reference photo uploaded for the character, we can enter a prompt to create a new image of this specific samurai. I want him to be kind of in a fantasy setting. So we're going to ask it to create a photo of this samurai with skulls of dead demons laying on the ground around him in a post-apocalyptic landscape. And I'm also going to keep the shot on Kodak portrait film and muted colors the same. So the style of the image stays consistent. And if we go ahead and submit this job, it should generate images of our samurai in this specific setting. So let's see how it does. So it looks like it generated a bunch of images of our guy sitting down. But if we look closely at a comparison between the reference image of the character and the photos that Mid Journey generated for us of this consistent character, you can see how similar it looks. Starting with this little decoration on the front of the helmet, it looks like it's copied over into the reference photo. There's also these braids along his shoulders. These are also copied over into the consistent character photo. This curved armor piece around his neck is the same. Also his chest plate and his shoulder plates. I created some more images of him uh, with his lover because he's, you know, a hopeless romantic. So you're probably wondering if this also work if your character has a face. So far the samurai we generated has a mask over him. So now let's try generating consistent character photos. Specifically for this one of a woman, she's got some horns on her head. Um, but the important thing is you want to see if it's going to be able to copy over her facial features accurately and keep it looking similar. Just like before, we're going to take this image of her and upload it into the Omni reference box. Then let's go with the prompt of she sits on top of an ivory and gold throne inside an Asian palace. It looks like with that specific character, there's a bit more variation in the results. I think because I specifically used colors like ivory and gold, it actually maps some of that into her clothing, which is why for some of these, she has a white dress. But if we take a look at some of these other examples, it actually does a pretty good job. Let's compare it to her original reference photo. I mean, if you look at all the little details, this red robe that's draped around her body, um, also this necklace area, the way her dress looks, and I think her face is also really, really close. Getting the faces to look identical does take a few more tries. Here's a, an example where the facial features don't look exactly the same, especially around the eyes. I think her face also looks a little shorter. Like in this photo, her face looks a bit longer. But if we look at another image generation that I created, this one looks way more similar in the facial features. We take a look at the eyebrows. They match very, very closely the nose, uh, the brow line, the lips, also the shape of the jawline, I think. So it might take you a few tries, especially with faces of people, but the results you get are really, really accurate. If you consider the entire presence of the character, including the face, the specific details on the clothing. Now, before we use an AI video generator, 
what we need to do is upscale the resolution of these images. Because to get the highest quality details in the AI videos, we actually want to have an image resolution that's also pretty high. We can upscale them inside Mid Journey. If we take an image, right click, go to upscale, and then we have some options. Subtle is going to increase the resolution and keep the details as close as possible. This is probably what you want to be using for your consistent characters to keep all the details the same. But to get the best upscaled image results, I actually like to use this tool called Magnific. What you'll need to do is select the upscaler here and then upload an image of your character. In this case, what I upscaled was this photo of a woman. Um, you can choose a skill factor, how much to upscale it by. And then if you're upscaling a photo of a person, you want to change this optimized for setting to portrait and increase the resemblance to keep it as similar as possible. Once you've done that, you can upscale the image. And if we take a look at the results, it's going to sharpen the details all around her. Now it does slightly change the way her face looks. If we look closely at this eyelid area, her makeup looks a little bit different, but it will sharpen all the details in the back. You see, especially around this cloth that she's wearing uh, around her head. Once you have the images for your consistent character generated, we can start turning these into cinematic AI videos. There's a lot of different ways to create AI videos of our characters, but I want to introduce you to this new AI video model that you probably haven't heard of, which is specifically geared towards generating cinematic shots. So video AI has been around for a while, and I'm going to actually go straight to this image to video. Um, which is how we're going to turn the images into lifelike animations. And we're going to be testing out this brand new Vidu Q1 video model. They've got a bunch of video models in the past. Like I said, they've been around for a while. But this new Vidu Q1 model is specifically geared towards cinematic videos. Let's just take a quick look at some of the videos I've generated. Here's one for the female character riding the ramp. I actually specifically generated this video clip to have extra camera motion inside, which I'll show you how to do. This is another video example of the female character clasping her arms together to pray. A lot of AI video generators have an issue where if you look at the hands closely, it just doesn't hold up. There's a lot of blurring, random fingers appear. But in this example, you can see that the hands look very consistent throughout. So let's actually go ahead and start generating these character videos. First thing we got to do is upload an image of our character. In this case, I'm going to put in one of our samurai where he's sitting on the ground with a bunch of skulls in front of him. And then inside the prompt, I'm going to describe the motion I want him to take. He lives in some pretty ruthless times, so I'm going to tell him to pick up a skull to inspect it. Now, let's go ahead and look at some of the settings we can control. So right now, Vidu Q1 creates 5 second videos. It does have HD resolution at 1080p. So that's really great for us. And then there's also this option to control the movement amplitude, which will adjust how much movement is in the video clip that's generated. For the most part, I recommend just leaving it on auto. I find that this works the best, but I'll also show you some cases of where you actually want to increase the movement amount. This amount just changes how many video clips it generates. We can just leave that at one. So let's go ahead and create this video. And, uh, yeah, you see him picking up a skull. If you look carefully, the skull he picks up actually isn't in the original photo. But looking at the way that the skull looks, um, it actually resembles the skulls on the ground very, very closely. So it's able to keep that consistency quite a bit. Here's another video clip I generated of these two turning to look towards each other. For your prompts inside AI video, it typically works best if you have a singular focus in your prompt. So what I mean by that is just having a single motion or a single camera movement inside your prompts. Here's some other examples of character animations I created. This guy, I just told him to bow his head and you see a slight bowing motion. You can create quite a few different camera movements inside Vidu. In this case, I told the camera to rotate around the skull. You can have the camera zooming on a specific part of the image. So for this one, I told the camera to zoom in on the face of the horse uh, as he rides the horse forward. Uh, it looks like the horse doesn't actually move forward, but the camera does zoom in on the face accurately, like I asked for. Again, notice how I'm keeping the prompt simple and just focusing on a single subject motion. Like I said, that tends to work the best inside AI video, 
and especially inside V2. Now I want to go over this movement amplitude feature a little bit more where we can control how much movement from small, medium to large is going to happen inside the AI video. So here's an example of a prompt where I told the camera to follow her as she rides the ram forwards. They kind of both stay still. The camera does pan just a little bit. So here would be a good example of where we want to actually increase the movement amplitude to large, which will introduce a bit more motion inside the video and perhaps make the move forward like I asked for. And then if we go ahead and create this video, we end up with a shot where there's much more motion. Using a larger amplitude does tend to create a lot more camera motion inside your video. So you have to decide whether you want that or not. But you can see that the ram and the woman do ride forwards a little bit. But for the most part, I actually recommend you focusing on more subtle, smaller movements. This is better to preserve the consistency inside the video. There's a lot less blurring and deformities. And the details will look much cleaner and sharper. So I showed you how to create images of the characters first and then turn them into AI videos. But using VDo, we can actually directly create the videos of our characters using just the reference images right here. So we'll need to go to this reference to video feature. And inside here, we can directly upload image references, which VDo will automatically put into an AI video. So let's try this out. We'll go to the images. And from here, I'll upload a photo of the female character. Then in the prompt, let's go with, she is in an Asian temple. Looking through the settings, uh, these are gonna be four second videos. We can increase the resolution. Let's make that 720p. Again, we can change the movement amplitude. And there's also this new option of the aspect ratio. So you can create a widescreen video, a vertical video or a square video. Let's go ahead and create this. This is a super cool feature that Vidu has and it works really well. The great thing about this is you can upload up to seven image references. So this time, let's also try adding in a photo of our samurai. And now if we generate this video with both of our character references, Vidu will actually put both of them into the AI video. You can also add in a background for the video. So for this one, I had the female character and I also added this new character of the monkey warrior. And in the background, I used a reference image for the Asian temple. So if we look closely, the faces aren't going to be exactly the same. But if we consider everything inside the reference images from the clothing they're wearing, it's pretty amazing how many of the details it's able to get right. In addition, you can put in more advanced character interactions. Here I've got the samurai holding the woman. And we can go for something that's a little more dramatic as well. Now, I still think using image to video is going to get you the most cinematic results, especially for single characters. But that can be much harder to do with multiple characters. So if you want to generate AI videos with multiple characters inside them, this is actually a really good option. Video AI does have a free trial where you can test out the video generations yourself. And I'd say it's definitely worth testing out. Another cool feature you can use with the new VDo video model is a start and end frames feature where we can upload two images for our character and ask the AI video generator to fill in what's in between those. And it'll let us create some really, really cool character effects like this background whirling behind the samurai. So let's go back inside VDo and we can upload two images. What I've done is uploaded two images of my samurai character and what the AI video will do is go from this starting image of him behind the temple and shift the background so that there's this red burning sky. So if we go ahead and generate this one, we can see that the background slowly shift behind him from the temple to the sky. And uh, yeah, I really like this kind of effect. Now at the end of the video, you do see his helmet deforming a little bit because the characters weren't exactly perfect. But we can just trim that last part of the video out. It'll tend to work best when you have a smaller amount of motion that you're trying to animate. So here's another example I've got where I've got this uh, hot spring and then this other image of a furry mystical creature inside the hot spring. And I'm going to tell the creature to slowly rise out of the water. If we take a look at the video it generates, because the amount of movement that I'm trying to animate is pretty small, it's a much, much smoother video. And we'll see his head pop out of here.
No cinematic AI video for our characters is complete without some sound effects though. This new AI sound effects feature inside Vidu lets us create completely AI generated sounds to go along with our character videos. We can go inside the prompt box and tell it what kind of sounds to generate. So I've created a bunch of examples already, but let's just go with like an Asian Buddhist chant, which is going to match our samurai character perfectly. Below that, you can change the duration. So it's set to five seconds on the default. We can bump this up to eight or nine seconds. And I actually still have a few free trial use cases left. You start with 10 completely free uses, so you can test this out. I also asked for it to create one of dead spirits to go with all of the videos we created with skulls inside. We can also make some more natural effects like forest fires. Combining all the AI tools I showed inside this tutorial, I made a quick short animation for our characters. Let's see what it looks like. People think the real war is out there. In the forests, the temple ruins, the bleeding sky. It's not. The real war lives in the silence after. When your blade is clean, but your soul is not. I've carved through demons in the dead of night. It was their whispers that lingered, promises, doubt, the echo of every life I took. If you want to see an alternative way to create consistent characters, which I used to create this Star Wars inspired Sith right here, go watch this tutorial.